Hey friends, I'm Sakai, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build this cool hover glow interaction where the borders are kind of glowing following the mouse, all using Webflow with no custom code. There's a little bit of trickery going on and some fun stuff, and this doesn't require any custom code, but I have added a little bit of custom code to make some things easier, but it's very minimal, and mostly it's all done with interactions and divs and, again, web design trickery. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited to show you how this works. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So to get us started here, what I have is a really basic layout, nothing special. It's just some text in a div, a heading and a paragraph. And then we have a card here with an icon and some text. Pretty straightforward, nothing too much to it. I'm, I'm not gonna show you how to set this up. It's very simple. But once we have this card set up and we have it in this grid here, what we're gonna wanna do is duplicate this a bunch of times and eventually have a grid that looks like this. But each of these cards needs to have a border. And as we hover over this grid, that border should have a glow in it that follows our mouse, right? And the way that we're gonna do that is first, we're gonna create a new div and we're gonna call this div, you know, border glow card wrap. Give it a new name so you don't get confused with my pre-existing classes. And all I want to do with this is copy the background color of this first div and make sure the background colors are the same. And I'm going to give it two pixels of padding. And now I'm going to put this card in here. I can do it here from the layers panel. And the last thing I'm going to do to this border glow card wrap is give it some border radius and let's do three pixels. So if you don't know, in general, a good rule of thumb is that your border radius is equal to the outer border radius minus the padding. So my outer border radius here is three pixels, which means that three minus two pixels of padding gives me one pixel of border radius. And that just ensures that your border radiuses are kind of matching and they're following each other really nicely and there's no weird discrepancies between them. So now that we have our card wrapped in here, you can maybe start to see what's going on. If I change the background color of this outer card, you're gonna notice what might be happening here. So I'll just make this like white and you can see that we have kind of achieved a stroke, right? This is kind of a border. And we've just done that by making the outer div pure white and by giving it that padding, it looks like it's a border. And that's what we're gonna to use to actually fake this effect. So let's change this back to our regular color. Perfect. So what we wanna do next is add another div and I'm gonna call this border glow circle. And this is gonna be our, our little circle that's gonna provide that effect of the glow. And to make this work really nicely, what I wanna do is first off, I'm gonna put the border in here inside the card wrap. And then I'm gonna give this a background color of you know white. I'm gonna give it a radius of 50% to make it a perfect circle. And next I will add a filter. This is gonna be our blur filter. And I'm just gonna set it to maybe like 80. Yeah, that actually looks pretty nice. It looks a little bit odd right now because the overflow is, is being cut out, but it doesn't matter. It's not gonna matter uh, once we actually fix this. So the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is to make this circle position absolute and set it to the top left. And you can see now that by setting it to the top left, it's sent it to the top left of my body. Uh, that's because it doesn't have a relative parent. So we're gonna go back to our border glow card wrap and set that to relative. And now if we look at where our border glow circle is, it's in the top left corner here, but you can see it's kind of tiny. It's just one pixel by one pixel, basically. We'll see why in a second, it'll make more sense. But essentially what we wanna do is to make it 100% of the width of this card plus half of the padding, which in this case, because of the way it's set up, is actually just half of the width and half of the height. But what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use some custom code. This is not required. You could just make this, you know, um, 304 by 200 pixels, which is exactly half and half, and this will work okay. But the custom code is just gonna make this a little bit more scalable and it's really, really simple. It's just CSS. And it's just gonna make sure that whatever your grid size is, whatever this card is, it's gonna be the exact perfect width. So to do that, I'm gonna add a new embed in here and I'm going to open a new style tag and close it. And then we're going to take our border glow circle and we'll make the width a CSS calc and it's going to be 100% plus 12 pixels. And the height is also a calc of 100% plus 12 pixels. 
The reason I'm using 12 pixels is because this grid has a gap of 24 pixels on both sides. So if this was different, you know, if this was 16 pixels, you'd want to make it eight and it would just have to be half. And essentially what we're doing with that is we're making sure that the div that we just created overlaps ever so slightly with this. So it goes in the middle here and in the middle here. Last thing we want to do is make our glow card wrap have an overflow of hidden so that that overflowing glowing border is hidden. And now I'm going to take this, copy it and paste it four times to fill up our grid. And you can kind of see what's happening here. Hopefully you can see that we have this like glowy, it almost looks metallic background because of that circle that we have in there. And so now there's another step that's a little bit tedious, but we're going to use more custom code to help us out. You can definitely do this manually, but again, to make it scalable and more responsive, we'll use the custom code. So what we want to do is essentially take all of our circles and align them to the top left here. We want every one of these circles within all of these cards to be aligned to the top left of the grid. Again, normally you could use position absolute and relative to make that really easy, but it doesn't work here because of these specific conditions. So first we're going to apply some combo classes to each of these circles. So we have two here. I'm going to add three here and four here to this last one. And then in our custom code, we'll just take this class, uh, duplicate it. We can remove what's in here. And then we'll just add the combo class modifier here. So period underscore two. Webflow adds an underscore to these, at least the number combo classes when it actually publishes the site. So you'll need that, even if your class name is just two. So two, for example, is this one here. And we just need to move it left by minus 100% and then minus 24 pixels, which is our gap. So we just kind of follow the same thing. Left calc minus 100% minus 24 pixels. And then we just repeat for the next two. So number three, this is gonna to be top. And then the fourth one is going to be both top and left because it's starting out in the bottom right. This will be moved up and left. So now if we save and close, we should see that all of those glows have been moved to the top left corner here. So if we hover over them, you see that it's over here they're all kind of sitting on top of each other, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. And it's starting to sell this effect that there is a single unique glow shared between all of the borders of these cards. So now we're gonna add our interaction. So with our grid selected, we're gonna go up to the interactions tab and we'll create a new mouse move over element interaction. So we'll play a mouse animation and I already have one here, but I'll just build a new one to show you how this works. So hover glow interaction. And what we're going to do is we'll select our circle and at zero on the x-axis, we're going to move this by minus 50% on the x-axis. And at hundred percent, we're going to move it to 150%, right? So it's going from edge to edge following the center of our mouse. So when my mouse is here, it's going to be centered over it. And now one thing that we want to just do to make sure is we actually want to make sure that this is affecting all of the border glows. So we select the class of border glow circle. So now if we preview this, we'll see that all of them are moving left and right following our mouse as we move left and right on the X axis. From here, we just kind of replicate the same thing. So with that class selected, we move on the Y axis at the start, it's going to be minus 50%. And at the end, it's going to be 150%. And now again, if we preview it, we get an error because this is the wrong class. So make sure, again, this should be border, glow, circle, the base version. So now if you turn live preview on, you can see what's going on and it's following my mouse all the way to the top left corner, all the way to the top right corner, bottom right, bottom left. And we have this glowing effect. So let's preview it. And as mentioned, it's following my mouse and it's selling this, this really nice glowing effect. So the effect is done. In theory, you could ship it like this, but obviously it looks a little bit odd because when I leave, it goes back to the center, which is fine, I guess, but it also stays on. It's got this really bright glow in the middle and it doesn't look quite right. So what we can do is if we close out of here, we can add another interaction to the grid. We're on mouse hover, we start an animation and I'll just create a new one called the border circle fade in. And essentially we're just going to take the border circle and make it so that at the start, as our initial state, the opacity for the entire class, border, glow, circle, is zero. 
and we'll just make it affect all elements with this class. Make sure again that it's the base class, not the combo class. And now we're looking good. So then we'll just make the opacity go up to 100 at our end state here. We'll do maybe ease in out and we'll just make this really short just so it takes you know a really quick second to, to start glowing and you really get that effect almost immediately. Then we can duplicate this and apply it as our hover out animation. Click into it, I'll rename it to fade out. Delete the final keyframe and uncheck initial state from our first keyframe. Then we're just gonna do a similar animation here. We'll do 0.15 and let's see how that looks. Okay, so it's looking pretty nice, especially fading in. You can see that it fades in really nicely, but you can also notice as I move my mouse out, it sort of has like a flash where it's going back to the center and then it's fading out. So let's go in here and just tweak this animation a little bit or just make this even faster. So it should be maybe like 0.5 or sorry, 0.05. We'll see how that works. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go back and tweak this animation to have maybe like 85% smoothing. Okay, and that should mitigate that effect a little bit. So now that it has more smoothing, let's do 90 even. We can go back and tweak the fade in. This can be a little bit slower. It can maybe be like 3.3, 3, 300 milliseconds. And the fade out can be maybe back to 0.15. It's a little bit of trial and error here. Let's see how this looks. I think that looks pretty nice. It's like slow enough that it's not super jarring, but also fast enough that you don't get, you know, weird things as it moves back to the center. Now, all you have to do is fill this in with your content as I have done here and hit publish and preview it live. Beauty, you got yourself a really nice glow effect. You may have seen this on some other websites. Uh, Cron does this in their product. I saw another product recently that I can't remember the name of that had this on their website that inspired this tutorial. I'll find the product and put it in the description. But yeah, that's it for the effect. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I think this is my first actual Webflow video on this channel. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know if you did. Uh, leaving a like is always a great way to let me know, but also leaving a comment and of course subscribing. And as always, I will have a link to this read-only file in my Patreon. So if you want to subscribe to that, it's $5 a month. You get all of my working files, all of my tutorials, and the link is down in the description. And with that said, thank you for watching. Until next time, happy designing.